Okay, good morning. Welcome to the uh, NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship East Regional here in Washington, D.C. A couple of reminders uh, for our press conference sessions uh, this morning and this afternoon. There is no flash photography in this area. There is also no video recording of any, of any kind from this area. We're going to ask you to please silence your cell phones um, at this time. Uh, I'm going to also describe the satellite coordinates for these press conference sessions. Satellite Galaxy 17, 4, K as in kangaroo, slot C as in Charlie, and the downlink is 11784.5. We're now joined up on the dais by LSU interim head coach Tony Benford. If you can give an opening statement, and we'll open up for a Q&A. We'll also have a couple of wireless microphones out there, so please, when you want to ask a question, identify yourself, raise your hand, identify yourself and your affiliation, and uh, we'll wait for the microphone, the wireless mic, to be brought to you. Coach? Okay, yeah, yeah. First of all, uh, we're excited to, to obviously be in the Sweet 16. This is uh, our guys have worked hard all year uh, to put ourselves in this position. Uh, I'm really pleased with the, the leadership that we've gotten all year from uh, Scholar Mays and uh, Tremont Waters, and those guys have kind of set the example uh, through a lot of the adversity that these guys have gone through all year. So we're excited. Uh, we're looking forward to playing a, a great uh, Michigan State team led by a Hall of Fame coach and Coach Izzo, and we're looking forward to the challenge. All right, Monica, we'll start right down there. Jeff Zilgate, USA Today. Tony, you had mentioned it a little bit last week, but how has your previous head coaching experience helped the past three weeks in what ways? And then when you also mentioned that the team had taken ownership, how have they taken ownership? Well, it, it's uh, for his previous head coaching experience, that, that obviously helps. You know, when you, you've been a head coach, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of tough in, a, in an adverse situation like this. But uh, as far as managing a team and, and uh, managing practices and uh, coaches and players, uh, I've been in that position and making game in game decisions. So that 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 uh, previous experience has, has helped in that. And then I think when you have quality players like uh, Trey Mont and Schuyler and uh, Nas Reed, those guys have taken ownership. They've helped. Uh, like I, I mentioned it before, they uh, they they've uh, helped keep one another accountable too. You know, and then on the floor during the end game, like you got a guy like Trey Munt and, and Sky again. Those guys are really good. They're like coaches out on the floor, and they, they help uh, myself and other coaches uh, for his in-game stuff, uh, tr uh, making adjustments and everything. You all right down here in row two? Scott Rabelais with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Tony, when, when you looked at y'all's team before the season, you thought this is a team that could get to, to this point. But obviously y'all have had you know, so much adversity with – with Wade and now with Coach Sims, what, what qualities do you think have, have, aside from talent, have helped you guys to, to fulfill your, your potential to this point? Well, that, that, that's a good, a good question. You can have good players, but there's got to be, at some point, there's got to be a, a, a buy in factor, I think, you know. And, and I think uh, one, one thing about these guys, we've got good character guys, okay? They really they, they trust one another, they love one another, they respect one another. I think that helps. And we uh, felt like we had, a, you know, we had a chance to, to have a good team. We wanted, obviously, one of our goals was to, you know, to, to uh, have a solid – we had a challenging non-conference schedule. We thought that would prepare us for conference. Then once we got the conference, we thought, we, you know, we would have an opportunity to compete for a championship. And uh, we got off to a great start. Uh, and and uh, I thought our guys uh, really uh, – probably went, some of those overtime games, close games that we went through, they really bought into, uh, you know, what we were teaching them in practice. You know, for instance, we work on a six-minute game when we get down and, uh, you know, the close games, what we got to do to finish games. And I thought those guys really bought in and, and, and into execution. And then defensively they bought in. I thought, hey, we got to get stops and then rebound the basketball. But I think just the, the guys, the buy-in factor has been huge for our guys and for our, and our coaches. On the right down here. Uh, Zach Brazil, New York Post. Coach, what's your favorite quality about, about Tremont and – what do you expect out of him facing a player like Cassius Winston tomorrow night? Uh, that's great. I, I think he's, he's, he's very competitive. I mean, he, he, Trey Montz is a, is a gamer. I think the, the higher, the bigger the stage, I think you see him take his game to another level. And I think that's one of the things. And, and he's become a great leader. I mean, he's more vocal than he was last year. Uh, I thought when he, you know, he, and, and he, he might tell you this, when he put his name in the draft and went through some of the workouts, pro workouts, I thought that was good for him. 
you know, we had a chance to get a lot of feedback from the NBA guys on things that he had to work on. And I thought, you know, one of them was defensively. He had to become a better defender. And uh, he's proven that by being, you know, co-defensive player of the year in our league. And then uh, being more vocal, more of a leader. And he's, he's, he's become more of a leader for us and uh, kind of an extension of, of our coaching staff on the floor. So I, those are some great qualities uh, to have as a point guard. You talked about how the bigger the level, the higher, you know, the bigger the game, the better he is. What do you expect out of him tomorrow night against a player like Winston, arguably the best point guard in the country? Yeah, um, Trey's pretty good too, but I think he'll 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 look forward to the challenge. But it's just not gonna be Trey. Mine. We'll have different guys on Cassius, who is a tremendous player, and but we'll have different guys that are guarding. We'll go over there on the right. Jacques Duce, WAFE TV in, in Baton Rouge. Uh, Coach, how would you describe Michigan State's big men and? How did playing Maryland and those guys maybe get you ready, and how did they compare maybe? Uh, physical, you know, uh, defensive linemen, <laughs> they're, pretty, they're pretty physical. They're good players. Uh, you look at starting with Tillman, who's playing really well. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he does a great job getting great position down there. Then they bring in Nick. Nick has had an injury, but he's really physical, strong. And those two guys right there, can they get position on you, it's over. So our, we got to do our work early in the post, and we got to get great help from our other guys. And then uh, Gones is tough. Gones is a tough matchup. A little, about it, a little bit in our – Michigan State reminds me a lot of Tennessee in our league, you know, for the balance that they have offensively and defensively. And I think a guy like Gones is a little bit like a Schofield pick-and-pop guy. So they're big. Uh, they present a problem. Right down on our right here. Stephen Wino, Associated Press. Tony, back to, uh, to Tremont. This is a, a school in Georgetown where, where Tremont originally committed to. How fortunate do you feel as a program that, that he chose to, to, to go to LSU instead? And, and kind of how important is he to, to getting as, as far as you guys have gotten on this journey? Well, there's no doubt. Uh, we feel very fortunate to have him. And, and Trey is, uh, like I say, he's an extension of, of, you know, of, of, of our coaching staff out there. He's a great leader for our players. I, I tell you, it's, it's, I didn't bring this up, but I thought he did a great job in the summer. Uh, with his workouts and in the weight room. He's changed his body since he's been with us, too. And he'll tell you that, that he's, uh, he's really just, I think, on and off the floor, he's really matured a lot. We're going to stay right back there on the right-hand side. Yes, Coach uh, Michael Cobble from WBRZ in Baton Rouge. How much influence, uh, I know you guys talk with Will Wade a lot, how much has he given you guys versus how much do you feel like you've kind of taken control of this and are running it yourself? Well, we, we've, uh, you know, we, like I said, coach texts with the players and he texts with our coaching staff and stuff, but, you know, he's not here, so we, we've had to take, you know, ownership. We're, we're, you know, Coach Hire, myself, and Coach Armstrong, you know, we got to implement the game camp plan and we're doing the game plan, so, and that's what we got to continue to do. To get, all we're trying to do is give our guys the best chance to win, and so, that, like I said, nothing's changed as far as our routine. You know, Coach uh, Hire has this scout. And he's done a great job preparing our guys for this Michigan State, uh, for the Michigan State game, and, and our guys will be prepared. Stay right down here in the middle. Uh, Glenn Yobo, USA Today Na Network, Louisiana. Um, Coach, regardless of, of like how you got here, um, are you having the time of your life in your coaching career? Well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I, I told our guys, have fun. You know, all the adversity we've been through, enjoy the process. I mean, this is uh, this is rare. <laughs> you know, you get to a Sweet 16, you can go your whole career. And, you know, a lot of coaches coach and never get to it. A lot of players play and obviously they never get to it. So I told them just to enjoy the moment. Uh, try to, uh, you know, we're just going to try to prepare and get better every day. And, and when game time shows, we'll be ready to compete. No, I, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I'm enjoying the opportunity to, uh, uh, to to have this opportunity. But my focus is on the on the kids. That's where it's got to be, you know. And I'm not, uh, of course, my experience. I'm enjoying, it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure these guys are prepared. You can go all the way in the back there. Melinda Adams, ESPN. Mm -hmm. Coach, if you could just describe how you're using the adversity, you and the players, to you know, as motivation. Well, good question. Uh, I mean, obviously, guys, when you Lose a teammate uh, like these guys, a brother in, in, in uh, Wade. Uh, th I mean, these guys grew up with him, and the scholars like a brother they grew up together. You know, that's something that um, you know you can you, know, you don't want anybody to go through. And these guys have dedicated the season to Wade. Uh, I mean, everything they do is about 44. Uh, for instance, the other night we were playing Maryland, it was 44 on the scoreboard, and, uh, and Trey just stopped the huddle, said, Coach, look, what's on the scoreboard, guys? And we went out and you know, pretty, you know, the guys got more focus. So we just did it. It's all it's all it's been about Wade. Uh, this entire year, and it will be. You know, I told these guys. It, you know, it's, it's the rest of their life. This, this, these guys are, will never forget. They'll never forget Wade Sims. Yep. Chase Michelson, State News. When you look at a team like Michigan State, and they defend really well from the inside the three-point line, and then your team has struggled from outside the three-point line without revealing the game plan. Sort of, 
what is that challenge like when you're facing a team that maybe their strengths not match up with your weaknesses like that? Well, well, one of the things with, with them, you know, obviously they're, you know, a standing coach and Coach Izzo, but th they're one of the best teams in the country in transition. They get 30% of their points in transition, okay? So we got to do a great job with our defense, okay, of protecting the paint, getting back and protecting the paint. Uh, then conversely, and then rebounding the ball, okay, once we get a stop. And then conversely, we have to push the ball. We got to try to get easy baskets. We're really good. We got guards that can make plays. We're good in transition. We got big guys that can score inside. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a game of wheels. You know, we got to make sure we have good execution on a, in the half court. We can't turn the ball over. Live ball turnovers, they feed off of it. And then we, uh, again, we, we're pretty good on offensive glass. So we got to do a great job of going to the glass uh, like we've been doing all season. Uh, Sheldon Mickles, Baton Rouge advocate. Tony, you, you talk about um, Tremont being a, an extension of the coaching staff on the court. What? What does what goes into that? What do you allow him to do? What do? How long is the leash? <laughs> it's it's pretty long. <laughs> no, it's pretty long. But uh, one of the things I think is this: he has uh, on the bench sometimes uh, when he's on the floor, he's communicating with Coach Hire, Coach Armstrong, uh, sometimes myself. Like for instance, Coach uh, Armstrong will call our defenses out, and so he's got to have constant contact with Coach Armstrong about okay, what are we in? Oh, you know, are we picking up full court? We call our fists, or we in? Uh, you know, if we go, uh, you know, one three one, which we call one. So he's getting the defensive calls uh, from coach all the time. And then for his uh, plays, we want to obviously push. It, we give him freedom to push it in transition. But if it's not there, we want to pull it out and execute and run a run a play, a set play. So he does a good job of, you know, I, I may communicate that to him. But he he has the option of calling that out on his own. Tony, I understand you're not you're not much of a sleeper. Uh, how how are you sleeping these days? <laughs> not much sleep. We're just trying to sleep after this, so we want to keep this thing going. I I don't need much sleep. Right, <laughs> I want to keep this thing going. We're going to our far right, coach. Uh, Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch here in, in Virginia. Uh, coach, a lot of teams when they if they lost a player the way you lost a player right before the season began, the season would have been over right then. Why wasn't your season over? What enabled your guys to keep going? That's a really good question. I, I think this, Wade, and these guys will tell you when they come up here, Wade really set the tone uh, with our guys along with Skyler and I thought Cavell Bisley and Trey with these new guys that we had. We had some, a lot of talent coming in. But when we started in June in the weight room, uh, in our individual workouts, uh, in our conditioning through boot camp, Wade was at the front. He was leading these guys. When some of these young guys like Emmett Williams or, or Nas, they would struggle through work, getting through the workouts, he would lead those guys, especially the big guys. And so he, he, Wade set the tone early for our guys, and our guys kind of fed off of that, you know, and they've kind of taken that. And, and like I say, he's, uh, you know, he's, he was a brother to these guys, and they really dedicated the season to him. Any other questions for Coach Benford? We'll take one right here in the middle. Might have time for one or two more. Coach, LSU played Michigan State and – in 1979, I, I was wondering, you were a kid then, did, did you watch the uh, Michigan State, Indiana State game, the championship game that year? And yeah, yeah, I did. I did, watching Bird and Magic and those guys. Yeah, pretty good players. <laughs> <laughs> well, but uh, was that, what, what else do you remember about that tournament on television? Uh, I mean, I, I think that was, well, that's the one that got everything going, you know, what the tournament is today. When you look back on that, I mean, those guys obviously went on and, and they took the pro game to another level, and I thought those two guys are really the ones that kind of set the tone on what you see today in the NBA. What do you remember about when you were playing at Texas Tech? What What are your greatest uh, memories of playing? I remember our last at my the tournament. Tur yeah, my tournament. We played uh, George. My senior year, we played Georgetown. I thought they won a national championship. Uh, they had some really good players: David Wingate, uh, Reggie Williams, uh, Michael Jackson, Ralph Dalton. I remember all those guys. We played them in Dayton, and uh, we played pretty well. And then they uh, they ended up beating us, I think, about three points in Dayton. So I remember Coach Thompson. They were a really good group. We got time for one more uh, from Pete. Tony, Pete Thamel, uh, wondering how much you know about Shannon Foreman. He's a guy in Baton Rouge who's been mm -hmm. a, a mentor in Javante's life. How much is he around your program? What do you know about him mentoring kids in the area? No, I, I've met Shannon, uh, you know, and, and he's been, uh, I don't know, as far as mentoring kids, I know he's got a relationship with, uh, with Javante. That's all I know. Okay. All right, Coach, you're all set. All right, Good thank luck. you, guys. Thanks. We're going to be joined by the LSU student athletes here in about two minutes.
Okay, we're now joined by the LSU student athletes, Nas Reed, Skylar Mays, and Tremont Waters, and we're going to open it up for Q&A right away. So please raise your hand, state your name and your affiliation, and we'll begin. Chase Michelson, State News. Tremont, when you go up against a point guard like Cassius Winston, obviously that's kind of the marquee matchup here. What do you see out of him, and what do you think you can attack well? Um, obviously, he's a, a great all-around player offensively and uh, defensively, but um, watching film, I just see that he's, he's really good in transition. He controls the offense. He runs the team, and everything pretty much runs through him. We'll go on the back there. Adams, ESPN. Skyler, this is for you. If you can just kind of talk, or uh, the other players as well, just how y'all have used the adversity as a motivating factor uh, to get to this point? Uh, yeah, I'm, it started with Wade in September, um, him passing away, and uh, we've definitely used it as a, a driving force in what we've been able to do this season, and we give a lot of the credit and uh, the wins that we've had to him, and uh, obviously with what happened with Coach Wade, uh, you know, we just see it as uh, an opportunity to prove ourselves when uh, chips are down. So I think we've done a tremendous job of that, and uh, it's going to continue to drive us as we move forward. Guys, we'll go over here on our left. Bob Wanowski, Detroit News. For Tremont, follow up on Cassius Winston, and I think your coach referred to him, he reminded him of Kemba Walker. Do you take a matchup like this personally, and do you feel like you have some attributes, quickness and stuff like that that you can use on him? Um, I would say I take every uh, every game personal. Um, it's a team sport, obviously, and I don't necessarily get into the matchups and everything that goes into that. Uh, that's for everyone else to pretty much evaluate. I go in knowing that I have to run my team. Um, it's about myself and my teammates and the coaching staff. So, I, like he said, uh, I heard Coach Benford. He said he's a great point guard. He's he controls the offense and everything. But my job is to go out and run my team and. Uh, just pretty much do what I have to do to help us win. So that's really it. We're going to stay in the back, guys, on our right-hand side. Um, Tim Lee from Tanson. So you guys huddled together when the score reached 244, and off you have a huge performance in the late game. So what was the emotion like at that moment? Can you share with us? Naj, yeah. you, Naj you want to take that? Um, we've been through, like, adversity moments before. I mean... I mean, for the score to be 44, I mean, it was actually um, something Tremont pointed out, and then, um, it was actually something that we all, you know, realized that, you know, it was time to go out and play our game and, you know, do the best that we can, and everything was for him and Coach Wade. I mean, they obviously both play a big part in what we do. I mean, without them, we like 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 Sky said, we wouldn't be here before. I mean, we wouldn't be here right now, and um, I mean, just getting through moments like that, you know, helps the team a lot. Other questions for the LSU student athletes? We'll go right down here in row two. A couple right here, down here in row two. Uh, Tremont, um, Shel Sheldon Mickles, Baton Rouge Advocate. Uh, coach Benford just talked to you, talked about you as a extension as a coaching staff. How how do you take that? Um, you know, when they they talk about that, and how much freedom have you gotten this year? Maybe not necessarily just recently. Um, I would say my. I was sitting behind the curtains when he was talking, so I would say uh, my leash is pretty long. Uh, they allowed me to to um, play my game, obviously, run the team, and they trust me with the ball in late, uh, late game situations, and they, they trust that I'm going to make the right reads for my teammates as, uh, as well. So just knowing that I have my teammates, uh, or they have confidence in me, and my coaches have, have a, uh, a ton of confidence in me, just it makes me play a lot more relaxed, if that makes sense, because I'm able to do, just play off instinct, make reads, and pretty much run the show. So that just, it's a very uh, free-flowing offense, if, if I would say that. Yeah. Trey Mount, uh, Ben Standig, NBC Sports Washington. We know you were uh, originally going to come to Georgetown, so you would have been in this building before. Just curious, what ultimately led you to sort of make the decision to go to LSU? And as you sit here in the NCAA tournament, how do you kind of how do you kind of look back at that at that decision and and your journey to get here? Yeah, uh, I was uh, committed to Georgetown, like you just said, and the coaching staff was on edge about being fired or whatever, um, and they pretty much talked about that all season. So my parents and I we 
he kept noticing that, uh, that they were talking about that, and then he actually got fired. So I just reopened my recruitment, and Coach Wade stepped into the picture, and it, it fit. Skyler, I know you, you get a little freedom too probably, but is your leash a little bit shorter? Than, and, and how does Tremont do as a coach on the court? Uh, uh, I, think, I think my leash is pretty long as well. Probably not as long as Tremont's, uh, but uh, as far as Tremont's game, Tremont you know, runs the show for us. He's done a tremendous job all season. And, uh, you know, he just, he's just what makes us go on the offensive and defensive end. So, uh, you know, we've got his backs with, uh, you know, pretty much everything he does. And, you know, every shot he takes, we think he's going to make. And, you know, we think he's going to make the right play all the time. So, you know, we just go as he goes. And, and uh, it's been working for us. Uh, this is kind of just a general question for really all of you. Like, what do you see on film out of Michigan State that – you think Gladys is really a strength for them, and what do you see that you think like we can attack this and help us win? Naj, you want to start with that one? Um, they're a team that can go. They play quick. They play fast, kind of like us. Um, the bigs are tough, physical. I mean, the guards, they get in the lane. They can score the ball, shoot the ball. I mean, they can do a lot of things that we can do. I mean, they're a great team, you know. They're one of the best teams in the country, I would say, and, um, you know, we're just looking to go after them. Skyler, you have anything to add about the Michigan State scouting report? Yeah, uh, the coaches have stressed transition a lot. Um, you know, they play really fast, so a big key for us is going to be getting back in transition defense, and hopefully we can just uh, try to make things tough on uh, their guards and uh, see what happens. Guys, we're going to go over here to our left-hand side. Uh, this is for all you guys, uh, whoever wants to answer it. Uh, Michigan State's obviously a little thin right now rotation-wise, about six deep. What type of things do you do to attack a team that, that's thin, whether it's getting out and running to try and wear them down or trying to get them in foul trouble? Well, this is uh, pretty much out to the public because this is media, so we don't want to give our games, uh, game schemes out. But <laughs> as a team, we just continue to do what we do, uh, push the ball and play our game. We play in transition. We like to play uh, free-flowing um, and pretty much play inside out. I mean, based on the film, I mean, they're going to play hard regardless. It, it, they put, like those guys go out there and play as if they've got somebody who's going to give them some rest time. So, uh, you know, they play really fast, and I don't think uh, how much depth, per se, they have uh, is going to affect uh, how fast they play and how hard they play. So uh, we can't look at them having six guys playing as an advantage. And, uh, you know, they're going to give us a, a – uh, a tough, they're going to give us challenges in some areas, and we're going to try to do the same to them. Right down here in the front. Uh, Scott Rappelay with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Skyler, uh, obviously, it's well documented, your season has been bookended by these two huge issues. Uh, how have you, what qualities about your team, the, and, and a lot of these guys you didn't know before the last year or so, has allowed you all to live up to your potential to this point? Um, the, you're talking about the issues as far as. No, yeah. How, how have you all gotten past all that to, to be the, the team that has gotten to this point to win the SEC, that sort of thing? I uh, mean, me personally, I haven't gotten past uh, what happened to Wade. I'm, I'll never get past what happened to Wade. Uh, I'm pretty sure I could say the same for all these guys. Um, Coach Wade, I mean, with uh, what happened with Coach Wade, I mean, we're just going to have to move forward. That's something that none of us can control. And, um, you know, we're out here to play basketball for the university. So... Uh, at the end of the day, the ball isn't going to stop bouncing for us, uh, whether he's on the court. Uh, I mean, whether he's on the sideline or not. So uh, we've used it to come together, and um, we're here. Stay right down here in the front with Ben. Uh, ben Stand again, BC Sports Washington. A nod for you, uh, having just kind of seen you mostly the last couple, uh, couple games. You, you've got sort of this old school uh, center game. How, how do you? Is, I guess is that a fair way to assess? Your game, and how do you kind of feel you fit in with sort of this modern uh, game where it's you know shooting three pointers, spreading the court, things like that. Mm. I guess that's a way to put it. Uh, I mean, I kind of just work on my game as it is, like handling the ball and post moves, hook shots, shooting threes. I mean, it's just something I work on, so it's it's kind of something that comes and like 
I mean, all related to the modern game because, I mean, a lot of bigs nowadays handle the ball, shoot the ball, and, you know, pretty much do guard play. Um, I mean, it isn't easy. So, I mean, for you to be able to do it at the, at the size and the way and things of that nature, people are surprised. Um, but when you work on it consistently, I mean, it comes to you. Any other questions for the LSU student athletes? We got one, one more. I think we got time for one more in the back. Uh, Will Shanahan, the Georgetown voice. Nas, you guys played um, a couple of formidable bigs in Fernando and Smith from Maryland last week, but now you've had a longer layover before some other interesting front court matchups this week. How do you and Cavell kind of approach um, kind of playing down low? Would you guys say it's mostly a matter of game plan implementation or just going out there and seeing what happens? I mean, game plan, of course, and then just, you know, just playing tough. You know, those, those two bigs, I mean, they're really tough. They're strong. I mean, they're physical. I mean, they really they really get after it. So just playing tough, physical uh, basketball, and just like I said, like, like I said before, doing what we do. I mean, they're gonna get buckets, and you know they're gonna do what they do. So I mean, it's gonna be all within the game. All right, guys, you guys are all set. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, Joe. We will have the we will have the Michigan State student athletes on the dais at ten after twelve. Michigan State student athletes at twelve ten, followed by Michigan State head coach Tom Izzo starting at twelve twenty five. Pick up the uh, en enthusiasm there, I think. Or the follow-up. I'll, I'll, I'll get you a yeah. I'll get you a follow-up. Yes. Uh, we start at um, twelve ten. Five five after five after.
your thing is coming into it. Okay, the official time is 12.07, and we'll be joined by the Michigan State student athletes um, up here on the dais in about three minutes. Um, just a couple of reminders. There is no flash photography in the press conference area, and there is no video recording of any kind in this area. 
Those of you who make your way to the press conference area, we're going to ask you to silence your cell phones. The satellite coordinates for this afternoon's East Regional Press Conference. Gal the satellite is Galaxy 17, the number 4, K is in kangaroo, slot C is in Charlie, and the downlink is 11784-5. We'll be joined by the Michigan State student athletes in just a few minutes. Okay, we're going to be joined on the dais the student athletes from Michigan State, Cassius Winston, Matt McQuaid, and Nick Ward. We're going to open it up for a Q&A right away. Again, we're going to ask you to raise your hand and wait for a wireless microphone to be brought to you. And before asking your question, please state your name and your affiliation. And we're also going to ask you to direct your question to a student athlete in particular. All right, we'll start, uh, girls, ladies right in the middle. Casey Harrison, State News. Um, for anyone who wants to answer, obviously, um, your team is comprised of juniors and seniors mostly now, but being in the position last year, sort of like LSU is in now, how does experience really help a team this far in the tournament? Cassius, you want to start? Uh, yeah. Um you know, experience, just, you know, we've been in a lot of situations as a team. You know, it, I, I said it all year, it's, it's really no situation that we, we come across that we feel like we haven't been in before. So, you know, we've seen it all. We've, we've made it through a lot of situations. So that experience, you know, just being comfortable in those situations kind of help us along the way. Matt, anything to add about your, your experience level to this point? Yeah, like uh, Cash just said, you know, we've been through a lot together. You know, we've uh, g uh, gotten a lot closer this year just – through uh, everything we've been through, and uh, it's really just brought us closer together. We'll stay right in the middle. Uh, Zach Brazil, New York Post. Uh, Cassius, what, how familiar are you with uh, Waters, and is this kind of, do you look at this as a challenge? I mean, arguably the two best point guards in the country playing in this game. Um, uh, I've seen them a lot, you know, with AAU, and then I've been watching them this year. Uh, you know, I don't I don't get into individual battles, you know, it's, it's really we, we both do a lot for our teams. And, you know, if we're playing our best, then usually our team is playing their best, too. So, you know, the victory in itself is just winning the game. You never played him in AU or anything? Uh, not that I remember. OK. Uh, Jacques Doucet, WAFB TV in Baton Rouge. Nick, um, what are your impressions of LSU, what they have, you know, down low in Nas Reed and Cavell Bigby Williams and some of those other guys? You know, they're huge down low. You know, um, that's going to be uh, a challenge for us. And, you know, we're out of the box out rebound, you know, stick to the game plan. You know, they're one of the bigger teams we face this year. So um, we're going to have our hands full. Yep. Uh, Cassius, I'm staring at your backpack right now with the green bear on it. <laughs> Can you explain where you found this backpack, uh, what it's of, and why you bought it? Oh, man. Uh well, it's uh, it's from China. My mom went to China early this year, and she saw the backpack, and she thought of me. So, you know, I, I love cartoons and the cash money thing. So it was all just a play off that, and I just I love the backpack. Zach Brazil in New York Post for uh, Matt and Nick. What do you guys think about the the matchup at point guard? Yeah, uh, like Cash said, it's not an individual matchup, but uh, Tremont Waters is a great player. Uh, like you said, he does a lot for his team. He can shoot, he can drive, he can pass. And, uh, but they got a lot of other good players on their wings. And, uh, you know, we just got to be ready. Yeah, I totally agree with what Matt said. You know, uh, it's not really an individual battle. 
you know, because um, they both do a lot for um, the teams. But um, I feel like I feel like we just gotta come out execute. You know, Cash gonna have to play well. You know, Trey might have to play well for his team. It's gonna be a battle. We're gonna sit down here on the right hand side. Mark Herman from News to New York. Nick, can you describe what this team's character was like to be able to keep on an even keel when so many guys were going out this year? You know that that that's that's a great question because it just speaks a lot about our character. Our character has been, you know, very high this year. You know, missing me, Josh, you know, Matt McQuaid, four games, you know, Kyle, you know, um that's a lot of injuries and you know, that's our um our core people. So um, we just battled adversity all year, and we pushed through it, and, you know, we were able to overcome it. Hi, Sean Haggerty for the uh, Hoya here. Uh, this is for Matt. Matt, 10-1 and against ranked opponents this year. How much is that in the back of your mind uh, for tomorrow against LSU, and how important is that going to be down the stretch? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, that's, that's good for us and, like, during the regular season, but, you know, it's a different time of year. You know, we're no, we know we're facing a really good LSU team with – uh, great players through the board, really big that rebound and then quick guards that can do a lot of different things. So, uh, like Nick said, we know we're going to have our hands full the whole game, and uh, you know they're a good team. We're going to stay in the back first. Reggie Chapman, uh, WBRZ Channel Two in Baton Rouge. Um, you guys guard the three pretty well. This LSU team hasn't shot the ball very, very well this season. Mostly get the ball inside. Uh, how does that kind of play into you guys' strengths? I guess especially at a stage like this. Matt, can you start with that one, please? Can you start? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, like you said, they're kind of a streaky team, but, uh, you know, they, they still have guys that can make shots. You know, you saw Mays hit that big shot uh, against Maryland, you know, and uh, Waters can shoot. You know, I feel like uh, they have guys that are capable of stepping up and knocking down shots when they need them. Will Shanahan, the Georgetown voice. Cassius, you and Tremont have both been uber productive this year, despite kind of bucking the trend of um, taller point guards in college basketball and the NBA. What attributes um, in you or Tremont's game do you kind of uh, point to to explain that production? Uh, yeah, um, he, you know, he, he does a good job of using his quickness, uh, change of speeds and things like that to get to his spots. And uh, he does a good job of just staying poised and staying in control during the whole game. He does a great job of controlling that team, pushing that tempo, uh, doing a lot of good things for that, for that team. Uh, I guess in my case, I just – I play within myself, you know, I, I know what I'm good at, I know my spots, and, you know, I don't try to play with, uh, outside of my strengths. To, uh, to any of the players, you, you play for a guy who's regarded as one of the top coaches in the history of the game, just what are some things you see on a day-to-day -day basis, practice, off-season, in-season, that make him the great coach that he is? Nick, can you start with some comments about Coach Izzo? Well, Coach Izzo's never satisfied, you know, that's great because he wants you to be the best. He pushes you to be the best every day. You know, um, we watch film every day, see what we can do better. You know, we go over plays, you know, t you know, typical coach stuff. But um, Coach Izzo, Coach Izzo is a, he's a, he's a Hall of Famer for a reason. Cash? Uh, yeah, you know, like, like Nick said, uh, he, he just, he, is, he always wants you to get better. You know, it's, there's no point in the season, no, no point of practice, no point of year where he just, you know, I feel like we've done everything. You know, it's always something that we can get better at. It's always something that can help us get to that next step. And he's been pushing for it each and every step of the way. We got one in, in the back. Um, Zach. Oh, go ahead. Go back to the backpack because you guys started laughing during it. Uh, do, do, you, do you guys have an opinion over Cash's backpack and do you think it fits his personality well? I think it definitely does. Like you said, whenever I walk into the Brez in the morning, he's always got cartoons on and. Uh, you know, it just fits him well. And uh, like you said, the cash money thing, I, I think it uh, it all flows well together. I completely agree <laughs> uh, with everything Matt said because um, he does watch cartoons all the time. I mean, I live with him. <laughs> so <laughs> I hear I hear all the little gunshots, the little, <laughs> the little Looney Tunes stuff. But, um, yeah, for sure, it fits his personality. Stay in the middle with Zach. Um, Zach was on your post. For either Nick or Matt, what – with all the injuries you guys have dealt with this year, how important has just Cash's consistency been to the success of this team? Uh, it's been huge. You know, um, Cash has been, played every game. You know, he's kind of been uh, the stable guy. But, you know, it's, it's not a one-man team, you know. He, we kind of just had that. It's not like a next-man-up mentality either. You know, it's a group effort and everybody just stepping up and doing more and doing more in their job and their role. But uh, Cash has been great all year, consistent all year, doing a lot of things for us, and uh, just keeping the core group together. 
Yeah, I completely agree. You know, um, Sky's just been really consistent this year. You know, between me and McQuay, you know, we missed ten games together. You know, I missed six, he missed four. So um, that's a lot. That's a lot of games missed this, this season. So um, Cassius has led us, led us, and you know, um, he's been really consistent. We'll stay right here in the middle. Uh, Glenn Gilbo, USA Today in Louisiana. Uh, Nick, um, Nick, right here. Um, y'all don't play a lot of zone, right? Why? Why is it LSU's struggled at times against the zone? Why is it y'all haven't played much zone, and do you think you might? Try some of this game. Um, I don't. I don't think we're gonna try any zone, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, you know that's not. You know we're a man team. You know we press up. You know we do our principles. Our zone isn't really our mo. What, why is that? What, why is it? You know what? I, I don't know, <laughs> but <laughs> that, that's up to our coaches. We you know we just do what we told. Cash. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's just that's what we do here at Michigan State. You know what I'm saying? We got a, we got a good system. You know, you help your help your helper. You you there for your teammates. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Man, been working for us all year. We we guarded a lot of good teams, a lot of good players. So I don't think it's time to throw away our principles now. Mark Mark Herman from Newsday. Cassius, you you piqued our interest. Uh, what what was the that trip to China about that your mom took? And are you a world traveler too? Uh, not only had the time to be a, a world traveler, pretty occupied a lot of times. So, uh, but yeah, she does. You know, uh, she has a, go a job at Delta that allows her to fly to different places. So she just, you know, taking advantage of her time, going out, checking out different places. And she was there. She always tries to bring something back from each place she goes to, and that's something that caught her eye. She got me and both my brothers one too, different bags. But yeah. <laughs> uh, other questions for the Michigan State student athletes? We'll take Zach. I think we got time for one more. Um, Cassius, the uh, LSU coach and waiters both said they, they see a lot of Kemba Walker in your game. What do you think about that comparison? <laughs> that's, a, that's a high praise. Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's an honor, though, because, you know, Kemba was a really, really good player, could do a lot of things. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm Kemba Walker. You know, that would be a little far-fetched, but, uh, you know, that's a really high praise. Okay, guys, you're all set. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Good luck tomorrow. All right. It's 1220. We'll have Michigan State head coach Tom Izzo at 1225.
Okay, we're going to be joined by Michigan State head coach Tom Izzo in one minute. Going to take an he's going to give an opening statement, and then we'll open for a Q and A. Uh, as a reminder, please silence your cell phones. And there's no video recording of any kind in this area. And if you do want to ask a question, please raise your hand and wait for the wireless mic to be brought to you. Coach? Well, it's great to be back in the Sweet 16, and we're excited to be here in Washington. We think we have a, uh, a completely different foe than any we've faced so far. Uh, probably the most athletic with size team that we've faced. Uh, early in the year, we, we, we faced a UCLA and Texas team that had great athletes and great size height-wise, but these guys are linebackers on the perimeter and uh, and huge size and in, inside I said I I love watching them if I didn't have to play them because it reminded me of our teams back in 2000 2001 with Richardson and Randolph and guys that just attack the boards I say they go with vengeance they go almost violently to the offensive boards and have done a incredible job with that uh, once in a while the missed shot becomes the best offense and that's uh that's near and dear to my heart. So I've uh, been very impressed watching them on film, and I think the two areas that uh, concern me is the turnovers, because we've been a little more turnover prone, and they do a great job of that, and of course the offensive rebounding. So uh, take questions. Casey Harrison, State News. Um, Michigan State and LSU have both gone through a lot of adver uh, adversity, albeit very different. What about tough times can bring a team together and sort of make a team tougher mentally this time of year? You know, it can. I, I, I think it all depends on the players that are there and uh, how they handle certain things and what are the issues. Uh, you know, I, I think um, for us, we've gone back-to-back -back years of winning 30 games. I think uh, I, I'm proud of the way the guys have been and they've dealt with some adversity this year with all the injuries we've had, but they've... Uh, They've just kind of hung in there, and I think it has been a bond that's grown them closer, and I know that there's been a couple storylines with LSU, losing player that was shot and the coach and different things that you've gone through, and um, it just depends on the different rallying abilities of each, of each team, of each individual person, and uh, that is so individually rated. It's, it's hard to say this team should be able to handle it, this team shouldn't. Um, I've had a lot of good teams. I'm not sure I had any that would handle our adversity this year with those injuries and just the way they seemed like we got one guy back and another guy lost. And uh, I guess that's what I'm proudest of our team about. We'll go with Pete. Oh, go, yeah, go ahead. Bobby Bancroft, Associated Press. You just mentioned you're happy to be back here. Coach K and Duke are also here. What is it like managing the expectations and leading such a storied program where this is getting at least as far, which is an achievement, is the expectation. You know, I, I learned to manage expectations, um, and I always complain about it. I complain about our media having them. I complain about our fans having them. I complain about our alumni having them. And then I realized that my expectations are probably bigger than all the above, so then I'm mad at myself. And uh, <laughs> so that I have to deal with a little bit, but those expectations are a privilege and an honor to to have. I mean, you work all your life to get your program to the point where people are expecting you to be some certain places. And yeah, you have to deal with it with your kids and you have to tell them that you don't win because you show up, you win because you earn the win. But uh, I, I look at a lot of good programs and Mike's got, you know, arguably the best as far as consistently doing something. I look at football programs, I look at pro sports and I I try to steal things from them that I, I think can help my team understand that those expectations can be a burden or they can be a joy. You know, it just depends on how you approach it and how you look at it. But for me, um, when I look back at 20 years ago, uh, I die to have my program where it's becoming. It's not there yet because we still have some finished business, but it has taken a monstrous step. And... Uh, I think that's that's all good, you know. I, I really mean that. It's all good. We'll go with Pete. Hey, Tom, uh, Pete Thamel from Yahoo Sports. Uh, we're in an interesting moment in time right now in basketball and college athletics. There's three ongoing federal investigations. You're about to play a team in a Sweet 16 that doesn't have its coach because of a suspension. I'm just wondering, as someone who's 
fashioned himself as a guardian of the game o over, over the years and cares about it deeply. Where do you think we are right now in college basketball? Well, I'm glad you said that because I do feel like a guardian of the game. I, I, I worked for a guy named Judd Heathcote who thought that was more important than anything he did. And, uh, I, I mean, I'm saddened by what, what went on with the federal investigation and what's going on. You know, but the problem I have today, since I'm not a big Twitter guy, um, what is reality and what isn't, you know? Uh, do I think there's some problems in college basketball? I definitely do. Do I think that people are wrapping their arms around it um, and trying to make a difference? I do. Um, not knowing different things about different programs. I mean, there's a million rumors about everything. Um, I, I will not judge anybody until I see the, the reality of it. And, uh, but it, it does make me sad. I think we're, we're at a point in time when college athletics in general and football and basketball, since they're so visual, um, you know, we all got to take a, a, a deep look at what we're doing and what is it supposed to be and what can it be. And, and maybe if there's problems, we got to eliminate the problems. And so nervous, scared, excited, probably all of the above. Uh, you know, sometimes when things happen, uh, that leads to change that's positive change. And if that happens, uh, that would be good too. Adam? Tom, Adam Zagoria. Um, just to follow on Pete's question there, do you think uh, there's anything good about what's going on now and that it'll clean up the game and then we can move on from there? And also, is there any hypocrisy involved when a team you know, has their coach sitting out, but the player who was involved in that situation is allowed to keep playing? Boy. I will answer it because it's my job, and uh, and, I, and I do feel like I'm on the NABC board, and I care about what the NCA and NABC have done, and I don't have a great answer for that, but uh, I think everybody should be held accountable in everything we do. I think coaches should be held accountable. I think players should be held accountable, and I think, you know, whether it's the NCA, I mean, we all need to be held accountable. It's hard to figure out what that accountability is. But uh, it saddens me that we're even talking about it, but it is a reality, and I understand that. I just hope and pray that uh, the game that I got into for the reason I got into it um, remains equal, where everybody has the same chance to be successful. And uh, the hypocrisy, I, again, I just don't know all the facts to all these things, and so I'd be insane to comment on something uh, nor would I comment on something when I don't know all the facts involved. Go to, to Marty. Hi, Coach. Marty Smith, ESPN. Where are you, Marty? Good to see you. Uh, what's it meant to you personally over the past week in the face of some criticism about your approach that so many people came to your defense, both as coach and man? You know, Marty, it, it's uh, – hey, listen. My old boss told me the game makes fools of us all. And uh, I'm sure there's been times that if I had to rewind something, I'd find a different way to do it. But in the heat of the moment, when a 30-second timeout, um, I'm not going to let um, one incident, one snippet, uh, determine two years of a relationship with somebody. And, uh, you know, I don't think many people can understand. You know, I've heard people say, well, in business, you couldn't do this. And no, because it's adults to adults, you know. We're still talking adults to players, just like my own kid who's an 18-year-old, you know, and and uh, all that matters to me is, you know, I could say it's nice that the former players, I'm sure they weren't happy with some things when they were there either. It's, we all, as we grow up, you know, I always heard the saying that your parents are the dumbest people on the planet when you're 17 to 23, and then they get a lot smarter as you get older. I think coaches are in the same boat, you know, and when people have success, when they've been through a lot and they had success and they've been pushed to levels that they didn't think they could be pushed to. Now, in saying that, do I need to uh, figure out what approach is right? I think we do, because every player you do treat differently. I mean, you don't treat everybody the same. Some need different things than others. But, you know, that thing is, uh, I'll say, is my fault if I offended somebody. And yet, uh, it's not an easy job to try to take 17, 18, 19-year-olds and push them to places they've never been if you want to accomplish the things that they want to accomplish, not that I want to accomplish. This is about 
their goals. I have players make a set of goals every year, five things they want to accomplish. And I tell them at the end of that, that's my job to hold them accountable to their goals, not my goals. So, um, you know what? We'll, uh, we'll work around it. We'll, we'll grow. Uh, who says that I'm, uh, I've made mistakes in my life. I make a lot of mistakes in my life. But the one mistake I don't make is my players and the coaches are usually on the same page and understand because we spend time with them. And that's what I'll, I'll say to that. Thanks. Stay with Zach in the middle, and we'll come back um, down here. Zach was a New York Post. Tom, what, what are your thoughts on the point guard matchup? Could be arguably the two best in the country, and just will there be any party that's just kind of looking forward to seeing how the two guys handle each other? I am. I really am looking forward to that. Uh, Waters is a heck of a player. He's jet quick. He's, they're similar in some ways. They're completely different in others. You know, Cassius is not the greatest athlete. They're both about the same size, but uh, – Cash can score it. He can pass it. Uh, Waters can score it. He can pass it. Waters is a little more disruptive on defense. I think Cash is, uh, uh, you know, his ability to shoot the ball from outside with consistency is a little better. So it should be a heck of a matchup, you know. And usually um, everybody hopes for two good quarterbacks, you know, and uh, in the – world champions of Super Bowl, you know, you always look for two good quarterbacks. Well, we got two great quarterbacks here, and I am looking forward to seeing uh, how it works. But it won't be where I think uh, it'll be Cassius against him or Waters against Winston. It's going to be still a team. You know, there's five guys. We're not guarding any one of their guys with one person. They're too big and athletic for that. So we're going to be cheating and having people on all sides of them. Sit down here in the right-hand corner. Coach Michael Cobble, WBRZ-TV in Baton Rouge. LSU's played in seven overtime games this year. They've been able to close out a lot of late games. Is there a common ingredient that you've seen in teams that enable them to finish when it counts? Well, it's usually a good point guard. You know, usually a good quarterback is going to make that play at the end of the game, you know. You, so as we looked at that, we tried to find a positive to it, and that's what we came. Boy, they can do the things. Then we found a, a negative. Why are they in that many games if they're that good, you know? And, and so uh, – you know, you're going to have something to be able to sleep at night. If you just look at the positive side of it, you say, oh, damn, you know, this is not good. But if you look at both sides, um, you know, we've been a little up and down in some things. They've been a little up and down in some things, sometimes shooting the ball, you know, although when they miss it, uh, as they used to say on my teams early in my career, the best offense was the missed shot because they got three guys looking down at that rim. And uh, so I, I think the reason they've had some success in those overtimes is they've got the ball in the right guy's hands. He made the big play against Maryland. Just uh, incredible, like one-on-two play because uh, they switched off with a big guy and he found a way to get around that. So I I've been very impressed with him. Uh, Jacques Doucet, WAP-TV in Baton Rouge. When uh, covering LSU football, when Nick Saban came to town, he would talk about you a lot. Tom Izzo says this, Tom Izzo says that. Um, do you maintain a relationship with him over the years? Do you guys, is this like a, a, a greatest yeah, of all time club? Yeah, I just talked to him the other day. And, uh, you know, Nick is, uh, I mean, we came together at Michigan State as assistants. And then we came together at Michigan State as head coaches. And, uh, you know, if he says that, there's a lot of times I say the same thing. You know, um, I just love people that have been able to sustain stuff over a period of time. And, and Nick's a very passionate guy. Um, you know, he's from... You know, as he used to call it, a hillbilly from West Virginia. I'm a youper from way up. We kind of had similar backgrounds, um, and we uh, we kind of shared similar things. But, uh, you know, I've always been a big Nick Saban fan just because um, I believe how he does it. I believe uh, that every day he's trying to get better himself and make other guys better. In fact, just text them. I might, you know, try to get down and see a little spring ball. To, you know, try to – I love learning from guys, and I love learning from some basketball guys, but I really like learning from some football guys because when you go to a football, um, like spring ball or OTAs, like when Mariucci was in it, you know, all those assistants are head coaches of those positions, and I think it gives me a better way to handle my own assistants. And so, you know, just like I believe that I'm not crazy about – players that play just one sport. I'm not a coach that just worries about basketball. I look at other sports and learn from all of them. Nick's helped me.
We've got time for two more questions. We're going to go one here and one back there. Coach, Matt Sachs for the Hoya. Uh, so you made a comparison of this LSU team to teams of yours in the past. Looking at your team right now, how would you stack them up against some of your teams in the past and the, the talent of this team? Well, the talent isn't as good, you know, especially with the injuries. I mean, uh, that, that sounds like it's <laughs> going against the players I got. I just mean, you know, I've had teams with, you know, four draft picks on there, and uh, this team isn't there yet. But the connection, the grit of this team, the, the physical power isn't quite as good as some teams I have, but the mental power might be better than a lot of teams I've had. They've been able to um, redevelop their team and analyze and, and figure out a new way to cover ball screens or do this to get away from fouling too much because we don't have as much depth or this or that. Back when I was comparing them to us, you know, we played nine guys. We we had guys coming off the bench. I mean, Jason Richardson and Zach Randolph came off the bench. Um, they ended up pretty good players at the next level. That either shows how dumb I was or how good they got the next year. But it was uh, – I love watching teams, and they've got depth. They play their depth, but they play hard. I mean, the one thing I love about LSU is they play really hard. I think we play hard. I just – think right now um, we're going to have to beat them a different way than maybe some of my other teams would have beaten them because uh, their size and athleticism is, is a little superior. But we got some things we've done right to, to beat other teams that were better in that area too. All right, we'll take a last question. Um, Tim Lee from Tanson. So, Coach, um, we saw Winston stand in between you and Aaron during the game against Bradley, trying to calm the situation down a little bit. So how do you view his leadership in this season, especially helping the young guys' communication? How do I do what? I'm sorry. How do you view his leadership for this Cassius? team? Cassius? Yes. You know, Cassius was a guy that, you know, we voted for captains early in the year, and it was McQuaid and, and Josh Langford. And, uh, you know, Cash is one of those leaders that he leads by example, which I think is really good. I've always enjoyed people that led by dragging other people with them. And I think that was an area when I was talking about levels he has to get to. That's that's another level, you know. And and boy, when we lost, uh, you know, Nick and I, I, I told Cassius that next morning. Now, I need you to because you have the experience and nothing, nothing, you know, fathom. He, he's flawless as far as being uh, uh, under pressure. He doesn't he doesn't see pressure and. So I said, these other guys are going to be a little more nervous. You're going to have to lead now and talk to them. And I think he's done a phenomenal job of that. Um, the kid is, has gone beyond where I thought he could go so far. But I still think he has another level we're going to keep pushing to. But as far as his growth as a player and as a leader, um, it's taken great, great strides. Okay, you're all set, Coach. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. It's 12.45. We'll be joined by uh, Virginia Tech head coach Buzz Williams in five minutes.
Okay, we're going to be joined by Virginia Tech head coach Buzz Williams in just a few minutes. With the start of a new session, we'll make these reminders again, please. There's no flash photography in this area. There's no video recording of any kind from this area, and we're going to ask you to please set, uh, silence those cell phones at this time. Once again, the satellite coordinates for these press conferences, Galaxy 17, 4, K as in kangaroo, slot C as in Charlie, and the downlink is Okay, we're joined on the dais by Virginia Tech head coach Buzz Williams. And we will open it up for Q&A right away. Please uh, raise your hand and state your name and your affiliation. And we'll start over there in the coach on our right-hand side. Uh, good afternoon, Coach Mike Tober from Spectrum News in Raleigh. 
when you guys played a month ago, it was obviously a very different team, both in the makeup of your team missing a player and them missing a player. How different does Duke look when they have Zion in the lineup, and, and how different are you now that Justin's back? It's hard to say. Obviously, we don't have evidence of it. Um, when we played them, I think it was their second full game playing without number one. Um, I think he's the best player in the country. I think coach is uh, the best coach ever in college basketball. But two games in, I don't know that schematically they had changed much. We played 12 games without five. It's arguable, but I think he's really important to what we do. I know that's not the storyline today, but he has for sure made an impact in the progression of our program throughout his tenure, and we're very grateful that he's back. But it's hard to say <clears throat> um, what, what the difference is other than two teams have both added two really important cogs to their roster. Uh, Sean Haggerty, the Hoya here. Uh, three consecutive NCAA tournament appearances uh, for you. First of all, how proud are you of this team? And also, what makes this squad different for you guys that gives you confidence and hope? Well, it's the first time that it's happened in 111 years at Virginia Tech. Um, I think that it speaks to the character of our kids and how their parents raised them. I think it speaks to the work ethic of everybody in our program. It's a long way to go from 2 and 16 to the Sweet 16. Uh, the margin in our league, in my opinion, is as thin as any league in the country. And so you can improve and your results not necessarily show that. And so I think it's been gradual in some respects. I think it's been miraculous in many other respects. But I think the reason uh, why we're still playing is because of who our guys are. Um, so many people within our program that don't have a chance to be in front of the microphone. Our managers are just as important as our players. Our GAs are really important. Our student trainers are really important. So I think it's the collection of all of those people trying really hard and, and caring for one another, regardless of what Twitter says. I'm sitting down here with Adam. Uh, Adam Zagoria, how you Zags, doing? Zags, what's up, How baby? you doing, buddy? Um, I believe there are 24 Canadians in the tournament when it started, yeah. including Nikhail and RJ. Yep. Can you just talk a little bit about how you first came to recruit Nikhail and w just what you think about the overall growth of Canadian talent? It's exploded uh, in my career. Um, Jamie McNeely, who is uh, the top assistant on my staff, was on the team as a player at University of New Orleans when I coached him. He's been uh, with us ever since. And he was obviously an incredible piece to all of the Canadians we've signed. I know you saw Junior Cadogan play a lot of games uh, in this building. So uh, obviously Jamie's relationships in Canada are very important. Jamie's brother is a head coach of a university in Canada. So I'm kind of the third wheel in all of it. The one thing that I would say about Nikhil is uh, recruited as one of the best players in the country, as he should have been. His high school coach is one of the best human beings I've ever been around. Uh, intimidated when I'm in his presence because he has such a, a good spirit about him. I think the thing about Nikhil and how his mom raised him, uh, he's very pure. He has a lot more wisdom than his age belies. And I think that he really respected what we were trying to do at Virginia Tech, and he had admiration for how hard it was going to be. And that was the attraction to him, for him. Um, he was willing to step in to a situation that was building instead of maybe going somewhere where it had already been built. And I think that allure was really important for his experience. But collectively, relative to the country, they're – as you mentioned, they're, they're, they're everywhere now. And Canada's just become another place that's populated with really good players that everybody in the country is recruiting. No, sir. We'll go to the middle of the room. Hi, Coach. Adam Zalonka with the Washington Times. Um, we, 
regarding your statement with uh, about Thai outlaw this morning, we saw that statement very transparent. Um, can you just take us through the week and and when you first learned of the charge and what else went into that decision making process? Sure. Thanks for asking. Uh, I've learned a lot uh, over the last 48 hours. I've learned a lot about uh, the legal process. I've learned a lot about how it became public so quickly. It's been interesting to study all of that and try to connect the dots. To give you a little bit of context, um, and Ty's given me permission to say this, uh, he signed the release for me to say this. So the disturbance that occurred that led to the search warrant happened while we were in California. The search warrant was issued and executed while we were in California. We traveled all day Monday, got back Monday night. That's when we were made aware of what had transpired and then spent the next 24 hours trying to figure out what all had happened. Um, Whip Babcock, Angie Littlejohn, John Boleyn, everybody has been involved from the very beginning. And I think that um, so that we were transparent, that's why we sent out the statement. I've been amazed at some of the things that have been said about our kids and about our program. And it's been good um, because I've learned so much. Todd took a drug test by an outside agency yesterday before we left, and the test was negative. So maybe sometimes what scrolls across TV may not actually be the whole story or what is published on Twitter in an ironically efficient pace may not be the whole story. And so um, Ty's handled everything perfect. He's been transparent, not only with me, but with all of the authorities involved. And I think it'll play itself out. And uh, maybe there should be an apology. Maybe not. Maybe that's just me being um, overprotective. But I think we've handled it perfectly. And we'll let the process play itself out. We'll stay in the middle of the room. Coach Jimmy Patzos, NBC Washington. Zags, what about this guy in the media? And don't wait for that apology. Are you kidding me? That gives me yeah. hope. If you're wait, Don't wait for that apology either, by the way. <laughs> I love um, Patzos. Hey. Duke is not a great defensive team, but yet they seem to get you to turn the ball over for scores. In other sure. words, they're like a football team that might give up a lot of yards, but when they get you turned over, they go for scores. Yes. How do you deal with it? You get the ball out of your point guard here, Jones. I've watched them play a lot, Texas Tech, yep. Virginia, in person. But when they turn you over, they lead to scores. What do you do about that? Well, they're third in the nation in uh, block shots, fourth in the nation in steals, which is only evidence to what you said. I think mathematically, Coach, what you have to do is one statistic that's really important um, in the last three years that we've played Duke. However you can, you have to have, a, to have a chance to win, you have to have more field goal attempts. Because if you have more field goal attempts, that means you're not turning it over for a pick six on the other end. A block shot in our program is a turnover. So you, you can't have block shots, you can't have live ball turnovers. And then the next thing is, which I think is our biggest concern anytime we play a team as talented as they are, we can't give them extra possessions on the offensive glass. And so one of the things that we monitor every time we play a really good team is how many shots do they have versus how many shots do we have? Not what the score is, but just that number in and of itself speaks on a lot of different layers, as you know. But you can't give them uh, pick six points because not only uh, does that play to them, but it means that they're winning the field goal attempt battle, if that makes sense. We're going to go down here on our right-hand side in the corner. Uh, Mark Berman in the Roanoke Times. Uh, just to finish up with Ty, can you kind of clarify whose decision was it? Was it which decision to let him play? Because of the circumstances, how much of a cut and dried, easy decision did it wind up being? And, and how much of a, of a relief it is for everybody that he's going to be able to, to play in the game? Yeah, I, th I think if um, 
he had mishandled anything, the decision would be different. Obviously, long before I was employed at Virginia Tech, there were appropriate protocols for this type of situation. I think we've been very transparent with that. I think that was included in the statement. And I think we followed that to a T. I think uh, for Ty and for his mom to give me permission to say what I said uh, in a statement, I suppose, that went nationwide, I think that that speaks to the transparency, not only of his family, but of our program. But in defense of my boss, I think he's handled everything perfectly. And uh, I can send you the protocol if you're interested in it. Uh, it's been written out for a long period of time. Yep, we'll go. But Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. Every coach comes in, and they, they are very complimentary of their own conference. They love it. How is the ACC just different, and how does it prepare guys for this kind of experience? Yeah, you're right. Uh, I think every coach should say that they coach in the best league, right? That's uh, You don't want to say you coach in the fourth best league. Um, a, a few things. I used to answer this a lot from Zags when uh, it was the Big East that I was a part of. I think the 18 games with not necessarily all mirrored opponents makes it difficult, right? Because 10 of the games we play are single games, right? And so the prep involved in those single games is arguably the same as it is with your mirror opponents. I think the depth of the roster, not the talent, Everybody has talent, but it's the depth of the talent on each roster. And then it's hard to argue this league has more Hall of Fame coaches that are still coaching. Like they've, they were inducted when I was a teenager, right? And they're still employed and uh, winning national championships. I think the other thing, and I don't think that it's necessarily fair to coaches, uh, but if you only looked at postseason NCAA tournament success – I think our league speaks to we've won more games in the NCAA tournaments, more national championships. I don't necessarily think that that's always fair because it's a one-and-done type situation. But it's hard to argue that this year five of the remaining teams are still from the league. And if you look at it um, in reverse, I think the success in our league kind of maybe helps add to we believe it's the best league in the country. We got time for two more. We, two more. We're gonna start right down here in the corner, and then we'll go back. Uh, Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch, uh, Coach. Uh, Good last, to see you. It's nice to see you. You guys send everybody. We, I haven't seen Barber yet. He's in Louisville. Hill. Oh, that must be where UVA is. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. He misses you. I know. He, yeah, he, I know. He, he and I are such close friends. <laughs> well, well um, aside from that. Um, Kerry Blackshear had a very nice offensive game last time you played Duke. Uh, what did you see uh, going into that game that you thought enab would enable him to do that? Will, will he be able to do it, do it again? And also, you shot very well inside the three-point line last time. Was that good shot selection? Was it just a good night? What, are the, what happened there? Yeah, I think uh, KJ has been – I think KJ, if you were to pinpoint one person or one player on why we're – playing in this tournament, it would be hard to argue that his importance to our team in the 12 games that five didn't play, it was monumental. And I think um, his efficiency during those 12 games is as good as any player above 6'5 I've seen in a long, long time, whether he was on our team or not. Everything that we did during those 12 games, 99% uh, of it was brand new. And so much of it was um, – I don't know if decoy is the right word, but a lot of it was a decoy prior to KJ touching the ball. And KJ was getting touches all over the court. And then once he touched it, that somewhat ignited the action that we really wanted to get to. And I think with each passing game, if you study statistically how our team did and uh, how KJ did, with each passing game, his efficiency continued to improve. So. Obviously, in that 12-game stretch, that was towards the end, and I think K.J. was just playing at an incredibly high level. Does it translate to tomorrow? I, I hope that it does. Um, and then to answer your second question on 
our field goal percentage from two. You know, we've been top 10 in the country all year long in Ken Palm offensively, and a lot of that, in my opinion, or a portion of that is because of our efficiency inside the paint. But in that stretch when we were playing without five, you know, the, the value of the possession was almost um, heightened in many ways because we had to kind of grind down in a uh, – how, how can we score the ball uh, in different ways? And KJ was for sure the fulcrum of all of that. We'll take our last question from over there in the right-hand side. Coach Terrence Schroeder, NBC Sports Washington. Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Um, for Nikhil, you, how has he improved from his freshman year to his sophomore year since you've had him? It's been dramatic would be the easy answer. Uh, he's the most diligent, conscientious person that I've ever coached as a player. Um, he is in the office most days before I am. Uh, he's very regimented in how he lives. He has a very small circle of influence in his life. Very accountable in what he does academically. Uh, competes in the classroom in the same way he competes on the floor. And I think it's just a compound effort of how he lives each day. Um, more aware of what he puts in his body than anybody at his age that I've ever seen very uh, cognizant of what he is weak at relative to his body and spends extra time in the weight room alone trying to strengthen that. Spends an inordinate amount of time in the training room, not because he's rehabbing, but it's almost like prehab where he's trying to strengthen his hams, uh, stretch his hip flexors. He's just very, very aware. Um, what I would say the major difference is, is all of what I said has improved his body. His game has continued to improve because he works on his game at the same way rate that he works on his body. But as his body has evolved and changed, it's added to his game because it's a lot harder to knock him off his line now. He's much more comfortable and stronger slash explosive to gain space off the bounce. And so I, I think it's just the compound effort of what he's done day after day. He was a part of the first two summer sessions prior to his freshman year and both summer sessions heading into his sophomore year. And he was at like 43% of his degree completed in that percentage of time. And he was just on campus every day and he was doing those same types of uh, – that same type of effort in our facility as he was in study hall. And I think it's just the compound effort of that. Okay, Coach, you're all set. Thank you. Thanks. We'll be joined by the Virginia Tech student athletes, Justin Robinson, Ahmed, Ahmed Hill, and Ty Outlaw in just a few minutes.
Okay, we'll be joined by Virginia Tech student athletes Justin Robinson, Ahmed Hill, and Ty Outlaw. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll, a wireless mic will be brought to you. Um, also, please state your name and your affiliation and to please direct your question to one of the student athletes specifically. And we'll start right down here in the front. Matechsideline.com. Uh, Med, you're the only player on this team to be with Buzz for all 100 wins at Virginia Tech. Uh, what has he meant to you personally and, and from a basketball sense? Uh, and how much do you think you've meant to, to the program during those 100 wins? Um, you know, it's a great thing to accomplish. I think I ain't, uh, know how big it was until, you know, some of the coaches staff told me about it. Um, I think that's a tremendous thing to have on your resume. Um, but Buzz has meant a lot to me, um, more of a father figure than a kind of a basketball coach. And, you know, I'm just very appreciative of those 100 wins and everything that has transpired through my five years. Mike, to Mike Topper of Spectrum News in Raleigh. This is for any one of the players if you want to take the lead on this. Uh, you obviously saw Duke a month ago. were successful at home. They're a team that likes to attack the paint. Maybe not a great shooting team, but they really pounded in. How do you kind of try to pack it in and prevent them from getting those close baskets, especially with guys like RJ and Trey attacking, and obviously Zion? Let's start with Ty. Uh, I'll pass to <laughs> Justin Rose. Okay. Um, it's kind of a hard question to answer for myself. I mean, I got to watch it from the, the bench. Um, I think that game, our game, our game plan was good. Um, we're never going to try not to let anybody get to the paint, and they have good players. So, I mean, I think we have to keep that same mindset and try to have them beat us from the outside. But knowing they have fantastic players who are going to get drafted early, it's kind of, I mean, it's hard to go against. But at the same time, the coaching staff that we have and the players that we have are all bought, uh, built into the system. So I think it'll all work out. Stay right down here in the right-hand corner. Uh, Wayne Epps with the Richmond Town Dispatch. Uh, Justin, this is your first time playing in D.C. since I think your freshman year. Uh, so uh, this yeah. is how exciting has it been, you know, leading up to what will tomorrow night be like uh, playing so close to home? Um, I think it's a, a tremendous feeling to be able to play close to home again. But uh, at the same time, I, I'm not really focused on that. I, I think we're just worried about the big matchup that we have. And although there'll be a lot of supporters for all of us and the fans, I think we're ready to, to buy into what we have to do to win the game. Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch for Ty. Ty, of all the days in your life, this would have been a pretty easy one for you to uh, sort of duck the media, but yet you're out here. Uh, could you talk about why you decided to come out here and what the last 24 to 48 hours have been like for you? Um, I, you know, I came out here because I want to be with my teammates and um, really I've done nothing to not want to be out here, but Right now, I'm focused on the game we have against Duke Friday, um, the disturbance that led to the search warrant and the execution of the search warrant. was uh, I was in Florida while all of that happened, and um, I discussed it immediately with Coach Williams, and I've um, done everything that's been asked of me. And I'm just really excited to be with my teammates. I'm not really focused on anything else. WRL TV in Raleigh. Just to follow up on that, was there ever a moment in the last few days that you thought your college career was over? Not me personally. Uh, I'm sure everybody else outside the program might have thought that, but uh, that's the reason why we follow protocols and the reason why you know I trust in my coaching staff and Buzz Williams. We'll stay right in that row, Zach. Um, for a bit, um, how different will this game be considering the the game in Blacksburg, they didn't have Zion, you didn't have, you didn't have Justin. How, just how much different will those two guys being in this game make this game? Uh, I think it'll be a, uh, the same game, but just adding two different players. Um, you know, we added number one, Zion, and then you add in Justin Robinson, which are two great players, I think. But I think the game plan is sticks the same. Um, the high level talent out there sticks the same, and you know, the intensity sticks the same. We'll stay right. We'll stay right in that row. Okay. I'm Brian Murphy with the News and Observer in Raleigh. Ty, uh, the, the the shot you hit against Duke late in that game. Um, can, can you walk me through what what you know what, what the play call was? You, you know how open you were and and what you got out of making that shot and to to put you guys ahead for good. Um, to be honest, I wasn't um 
there was no play call for me in particular, but uh, I was in foul trouble and was on the bench uh, for a couple minutes. Got in with a minute and 30 left. Um, I knew it was tied, but uh, we ran a play. It came my way, and um, unconsciously, I just shot the ball. You know, that's what I do naturally. And it went in, and um, I think I processed it afterwards that we were up and um, just wanted to get a stop to not let them get the lead back tied or take the lead at all. So um wasn't meant for me to shoot. Just, you know, I was just an option on that play. And I think Beatty made the pass. You know, he just made the right play. And I knocked down the shot. Mark uh, Berman, the Roanoke Times, uh, for Ty and Med. Uh, when you played Duke the last time, they turned the ball over 12 times and they only made seven threes. What do you kind of need to bottle from that uh, game defensively to kind of uh, have a similar uh, result tomorrow? And and how worried are you that you know be, you know with with Zion now how much difference is going to be going to be in terms of trying to keep him out, out of the paint, uh, like the game plan last time? Um, our game plan is this the same. Yeah, he's a tremendous player, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, we're gonna not let the ball get in the paint, make him shoot long contested threes, um, and force turnovers. We're gonna limit our turnovers and get great shots. Ty, that's it. Same thing. <laughs> We'll start right down here in the right corner. Uh, Tyler, Ed, um, in, in the game against Duke last month, Kerry uh, was key in that win. Um, just how big will he be uh, tomorrow night? Uh, how big a uh, part of it, you know, obviously the game plan heading to tomorrow night, what will Kerry be? You know, uh, he's a big inside presence for us. Um, and I think when he's a threat on the inside, it frees up everybody else to do um, our job easier. And um, I don't think we can win any game without him really uh we need everybody on the floor and he's just another major part that we need stay right in that area uh this one's uh for justin uh, this is kind of the sweet 16 is an uncharted territory for this program for virginia tech duke uh, you know has been there a multitude of times how do you guys go into friday and try to i guess prevent the moment for getting too big or, or try to quiet some of that outside noise as you make you know first sweet 16 in a long time um, I think we have a very mature group. Um, I would say the second round was kind of – the second game was unfamiliar territory for us too. But, I mean, I think we handled the situation well, and I think that's kind of how we're going to handle this moment. Um, it's another game against another good opponent with great players. So, I just think overall we have to handle the moment the right way and just be ready for what's to come. And I think we got time for one more right there in the middle. Guys, having beaten Duke last month, how much confidence do you take into this game? I mean, you, you had a game plan, and it worked, and, and, you know, obviously other than Zion, you know, all these guys were in the game, and, and you, you beat them. How much confidence does that give you guys going into, into tomorrow? Um, I don't know if I can speak on being a part of the, the floor game, but overall, I don't know if anyone said it, my three out of four years here at Virginia Tech, we've beaten Duke, so I don't think we're – uh, excited for the moment. I think it's just another game for us, and I think we're going to be ready for whatever is going to come for us to end the game. 100%. All right, on that note, you guys are all set. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you for your help. You guys are killing it. We were leaning a little bit, yeah. I'm sorry, what? Um, I, I, uh, let me see. I might have a text about it. Oh, I think it's I think it's Isaiah Barrett and Zion. I think okay. it's two kids.
from my understanding, from my, what I've been told as of this moment.
Gustav ikke kjefte ut. Carried, carried the, was carried over the whole time you were, you played? And you're supposed to be taking points, right? No? Oh.
Okay, good afternoon once again. Just about ready to start with the press conferences from uh, Duke uh, head coach and student athletes from Duke University. Just a couple of reminders. There's no flash photography in this press conference area and there's no video recording of any time. I'm gonna ask you to please silence those cell phones at, at this point in the satellite coordinates, Galaxy 17, four, the letter K as in kangaroo, slot C as in Charlie, and the downlink is Okay, making their way to the uh, dais, Duke student athletes, freshman Zion Williamson and R.J. Barrett. Good afternoon, welcome guys. And we'll uh, open it up for a Q&A right away. Please raise your hand if you have a question and wait for a wireless microphone to be brought to you. And before you ask your question, please state your name and your affiliation. And please direct your question to one of the student athletes directly. And we'll start right down here in the front. Hi, RJ, Will Shanahan, the Georgetown Voice. Um, you and Nikhail both being from Toronto, do you consider this a showcase for Canadian basketball in any way? Um, it's definitely you know, great to go up against Nikhil, um, growing up playing against each other, and definitely showing you know, that Canada has some good players and that we're on the rise. All right, we're gonna go a few rows in the back on the right-hand side. Uh, Mark Berman in the Roanoke Times. Zion, you had to sit there at Castle Coliseum and, uh, and watch uh, your team lose to Virginia Tech last month. Uh, how much are you going to enjoy getting to, to play in the rematch tomorrow, and how much of a difference do you think you can, you can make? Uh, I'm going to enjoy playing the rematch because, um, you know, it was very unfortunate to see my brothers lose, um, even though they battled really hard. And I mean, I'm just glad I could be able to go to war with them. Um, I feel like I bring a lot to the table, obviously, and Virginia Tech is a great team. So, like, you know, they won that game. Not, not taking nothing away from them. So, I think it's going to be a battle. Go right down here in row two. Um, Matt Sachs for the Hoya. Uh, this goes for both of you. Zion, you could answer about the, the play with Taco Fall. Um, but, you know, at the end of the game, it was a uh, very uh, fortunate ending for you guys and for the play that you made to get the tip, then went, went to RJ for the game-winning shot. Uh, can you talk about the emotions that went in such a short period of time that last game? Um, yeah, it was a lot of emotions. But, I mean, I think the main thing we both felt was just uh, confidence because, you know, like I said, at the tour and Amar, Coach K looked at us and said, you guys are built for this moment. And, I mean, we were just confident what we were going to do. So, I mean, I got the and one, but Mr. Frito and he followed it up for the tip end. 
Or is there anything to add about the emotional swing at the end of that game? Yeah, I mean, like you said, just confidence. At the end of the game, you're not thinking about anything else but winning, and uh, that's why we were able to make those winning plays. All right, and right down here in the middle to Zach. Zach Braziller, New York Post. Zion, how would you describe this the last handful of months for you from the start of the season to now? I mean, could you ever have pictured how everything would have kind of happened for you? Um, I didn't picture how things would happen for me. I kind of picture how things would like happen for the team because, um, you know, that's why I feel like players come to Duke like they have winning history. You know, you want to be a part of like a great season. Um, the season has gone um, very well, even though we face a lot of adversity. But um, I think the season has like exceeded my expectations with how well it's gone. Yep. Do a follow up. Does the, you talked about guys who come to the winning history. You know, when you got hurt, there was talk of from people that he should not come back and play. That he, you know, you're probably going to be the number one pick. That you should just get healthy and prepare for the draft. What made you want to come back and, and, you know, when you probably didn't necessarily need to risk health? And um, a lot of things. I mean, for starters, like I love basketball, so I'm not just gonna sit out and just watch my brothers play. And you know, another thing is, I made a commitment to them when I decided to come to Duke. So I feel like I wouldn't have been honoring that commitment if I would have just been selfish and say I'm done for the season. Um, and you know, I feel like I just owe it to them. Like they were out there battling. Each game, they'd be like, yo, you know, I'm here fighting for you. So, um, you know, it meant a lot to me. So I was just ready to get back out there with them. I'm going to go back over to that right hand side. Okay. Uh, ben, we'll start with Ben. Uh, RJ, for you, how much or what do you think has been most improved in your game over the course of this season with, with uh, Duke? And I'm just curious also, how much did you know about Zion before you decided to, uh, to go to Duke? I'd say I've improved everything. Uh, trying to improve everything every day because it's not one area that I'm perfect at. So I try to work on everything. And um, Zion, uh, I just remember one time I was on Twitter, and then I saw him had this crazy dunk, and I didn't really know much. But uh, as the you know, especially last year was going along, um, started to become friends, started to talk a little bit, and definitely saw the things he was able to do. So I, I was excited to come here and play with him. I will stay. Okay. Steve Warner, Associated Press. Zion, you talked about kind of players coming to Duke at, at this point wanting to win. How do you guys handle kind of the expectation of you're the favorite in the tournament, you're the number one seed, you, you get the scare against UCF. How do you handle those, those kind of high expectations still? And, and, and how might that UCF game being so close help you guys? Um, well, for, I'm going to start with the UCF part. The UCF part, I mean, that, that's just March Madness. Like, I think we should know based off the history of March Madness that it doesn't matter what the ranking is, like the game is completely different. Like it's different stakes now. And for like the winning history, um I think he's wait, what was uh the exact question for the winning history part? Just just how do you handle kind of the pressure of, of knowing it's Duke and knowing that you guys everybody expects you to go to the final four and that sort of stuff. Oh well I mean we gotta thank Coach K for that. Like He's been doing this since before I was born. You know, he's handled being on top for like a long time. So I think he, coming here, like, I mean, he gives us the best advice on like how to handle this and like what to do. Adam. Hey, Zion, Adam Zagoria. Um, in terms of the social media thing, everybody knows your Instagram and Twitter have taken off. And I think Dukes have also, you know, what do you think about all that? And did you notice it seemed like it kind of started when you had the dunk in Canada from uh, the foul line or whatever that like Duke's social media kind of took off. W what do you remember about that dunk and, and what do you think about all the social media stuff going crazy? Uh, well, I, what I remember about that dunk is um, I liked it, but then uh, I also didn't like it because um, that's why I really haven't done it since because RJ literally took off from the free throw line like w two seconds before me. Um, but. It, People wasn't giving him credit for that, and I didn't want to be the guy to like take away like light from other players. And like I said, when people started giving my teammates the respect they deserve, then I guess I'll start doing more stuff like that. But uh, it hasn't really changed. Uh, with the social media for Duke, I wasn't surprised by that at all. 
I think they were already like number one with social media anyway. Um, and for myself, uh, I don't really pay a lot of attention to it. Like, I honestly don't post a lot because I'm just like focused on trying to win. We'll go right back there in the corner at the end of that row. Zion, I read that your mother was a pretty good athlete herself. I'm curious, just how would you describe the impact she's had in your life? Uh, my mom has had the ultimate impact in my life. Um, without her, I would not not be in this situation um, right now. Uh, my mom has done so much for me uh, to even be here. Like, I can't even say a lot of it on camera. But, I mean, like, I, without her, I would not be here, like, through – ups and downs she was there for me when people said I couldn't do certain things like you know go to college for basketball or like hopefully have a chance to go into the NBA she was the first one there for me saying like if you work hard do the right thing you can do it so you know like her impact she has the ultimate impact on my life. Uh, RJ um, when you think back to the Virginia Tech game last month what do you what does your team need to do better offensively and defensively to have a different outcome uh, on, on Friday? Felt like we battled hard. Um, Zion was out. I was sick in the first half. Didn't really play much, um, but to still be right there at the end was uh, was great for us. So I felt like we battled tough, and they just made you know more winning plays than us at the end. So just to you know clean up a couple of areas, and they have you know one of their key guys back, and we have our key guy back. So it's gonna be fun. Stay right in here in the middle. Uh, yeah, it's Sean Agri for the Hoya. Uh, really for any of you guys, Zion and RJ, how have the veteran players in your team, the sophomores, juniors, seniors, been able to lift you guys up in tough situations and get to and get to you guys where you are now? Um, they've been able to lift us up a lot, like even from like the walk-ons, Brennan and Michael Buckmeyer, because um, they've been in, they've been here. Like they know what to expect. They know like that rankings don't matter out here. Like this is March Madness. Like whoever wants it more that day. For those 40 minutes, that's the team that's going to win. Yeah, like all the upperclassmen bring energy. I mean, they bring energy, effort. They definitely help us uh, to be able to, you know, have more confidence and, and to be able to do what we do. And, and like you said, they've been in these battles before. So, you know, they tell us to keep going and, and that they have our backs. And it just, it's just amazing to see. We're going to stay right down here on our right-hand side. Hi, Mark Herman from Newsday, New York. RJ. What is it like to play with Zion and all the attention he gets? And do you follow him on social media? The question is, I think the question you should be asking me is, how would I get him to follow me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Um, no, nah, it's, it's definitely a lot of fun playing with him. He does some amazing stuff. Like in the UCF game, I think somebody was guarding me. I couldn't really see, so I just threw the ball up anywhere, and he just jumped and got it. So, I mean, that's definitely great to play with, and he does so many things on the court that, uh, you know, people don't really appreciate enough, but definitely fun guy to be around. Aiden Curran, 24-7 Sports. Uh, to both players, do you feel that playing a close game like you did against UCF, does it help you a little bit more for the next game as opposed to an easier game where you guys just kind of blow him out of the water? Um, I think every game honestly helps because um, as you as you saw from the first game against North Dakota State, the final score didn't reflect on mm -hmm. like how that game actually went. Like they were a great team. The game was very close at first, and you know, coach was looking at us like this is March Madness. Like this this is what goes on. And then in the UCF game, I mean, it was a tough game, and I mean they brought everything like. They, they played their hearts out, honestly. So for us to win that game, uh, it meant a lot. I think it showed how showed our will and how much we want to win. And but I think we learned from like each game. I'll stay in that corner. Jeff Zilg at USA Today. Zion, what's been most enjoyable for you this season? There seems like there's been an immense amount of pressure on you. And did you feel a responsibility that you have to have a monster game? every game in order to win? Um, not at all. Um, I don't really feel the pressure. And for the monster game, I don't feel pressure to have to have that every game. Um, because we have a lot of talented players on this team. So like we just move the ball and attack. And whoever has the hot hand, that's who's going to have that monster night. And we just, honestly, for us, we don't really like 
care who has that monster night because we're just going to be happy for that person. And, you know, we all have the same thing on our mind, and that's winning. I think we got time for two more. Yep. Zach, and then we'll go Zion, have you talked to any former Duke players about what it would mean to get to the Final Four and win a title? I mean, it's only been two freshman-led teams in the one-and-done era, the Duke team a few years ago, and then Kentucky that have, that have won it all. Have you at all thought about or talked to anyone about what the meaning of, you know, being the last team standing in March would be? Um, well, I think that's uh, another great thing about coming to Duke because uh, all the assistant coaches have uh, went to the championship game and, you know, they they tell us the stories about how they had a battle. Like, I think each, each of them probably came in like a number one seed, but um, it was a battle to get there because, I mean, March Madness is probably the perfect name for it. Like, it's whoever wants it, that's who's going to get it. We'll take the last one from Marty. Marty Smith, ESPN. What's up, fellas? Uh, it's funny to watch you guys watch the other one answer questions. You both laugh at each other a lot. <laughs> What's your relationship like away from all of this as friends and as teammates when you're not sitting here in front of us or on the floor yeah. together? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just like you said, just watching us laugh at each other, answer questions. Um, it's funny because I, I know like what he's thinking and what he's about to say before he says it. <laughs> but um, I mean, it's just great to have somebody that you can relate to off the court. And you know, I watch everything that he goes through and what goes on with him. And you know, definitely, kind of, he's helped me a lot. And it's just amazing to have a brother like that. Zion, you want to add anything on to that? I love him. He's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys are dismissed. Thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow night. All right, we're joined on the dais by Duke head coach Mike Krzyzewski, and he'll give an opening statement, and yeah. then we'll open it for a Q&A. Good afternoon. Yeah, we're obviously excited about being in the Sweet 16 and especially being up here. Uh, great basketball country, and uh, uh, our guys are, I think, a little bit fresher than they were last week. Uh, uh, Marquise has continued to improve. He won't be wearing a brace uh, on his knee for, for the game tomorrow. Um, we're still not sure of Jack, Jack White. Uh, um, that'll be more doubtful than probable, but we'll we'll make a decision on that on that tomorrow. So, any questions that you all might have? Please raise your hand, and a microphone will be brought to you. And we'll start right here. Uh, okay. Coach Jimmy Patso is NBC right. Washington. Can someone else ask a question, please? <laughs> Just, Gary couldn't make it. Just. You play, your defense is turning people over, but it seems like a football team. I asked this to Buzz Williams. You, you, your turnovers turn into scores. It's like, yeah. it's like interceptions that lead to touchdowns. And I notice you're pressing a lot. Can you tell us, is that a, a thing you have them gambling in the passing lane a little more? Not, not so much gambling, but because of the pressure that Trey can put on the ball. Uh, it won't happen as much tomorrow night because you can't do that to them because they can handle it so well. But... Uh, for a lot of teams, we're able to push their offense a little bit further out, and that makes passes longer, passing lanes longer. And then uh, uh, one of our strengths is our lateral quickness and length. And it's just, it's a good, it's a, the, it has all the makings of a good defensive team, which overall we've been a really good one. All right, we're going to go here, and then we're going to start making our way to the right-hand side. Coach, Matt Sachs for the Hoyas. So this is arguably one of your most talented teams ever. I don't know where you're at. He's right down here. Right here. Coach, one of, this is arguably one of your most talented teams ever. How does it handle ever? for you? Ever? I would, um, so, do you know what? How old are you? <laughs> I just want to know how long ever is for you. Uh, 
No, no, no offense, <laughs> but ever is a long time. Um, uh. As a coach, how do you handle such a young team, but su a team with such high expectations from day one into today as the favorite? Yeah, well, one, we have a great group of kids. We are talented. We're young. You know, the two kids who are just up here, they're 18. Both of them are 18 years old. So uh, you have to make sure that you're – uh, adapting to coaching a young group at this time in civilization, I mean, not four years ago or five years ago. And these guys have been really good to adapt to. Uh, you know, our program has uh, incredibly high expectations from within and from without. And uh, that's good. And so uh, if we succeed, we succeed famously and if we do not succeed we have tried to succeed famously and uh, I like that aspect of our program immensely we're gonna go to back there first. Mark uh, Berman the Roanoke Times uh, thinking back to last month's game in Blacksburg what would you like to see your team do better offensively and defensively to have a different outcome tomorrow and how much of a different game are you expecting the fact that you'll have Zion and they'll have Justin Robinson back yeah I think it'll be a uh, somewhat similar because we're both really good defensively and adding two of the best players uh, in Zion and Justin, you know, will only make it better. Uh, now, uh, I thought, yeah, I don't know how much you get from that game. You know, uh, I'd like to have one more, like cover the corner, you know, on penetration so we don't give outlaw an open three. Uh, I'd like to hit one more shot, you know, but overall, you know, they played – they played a little bit better than we did, and uh, they're really good. You know, I, I said at that time, I thought Buzz really did as good a job as anybody in our league coaching, and uh, they're 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 veterans. They're together. They play. They they don't they don't beat themselves. They do not beat themselves, and uh, I really thought uh, at the end of the season that there are five teams from our conference that could win the whole thing uh and the, the five that i thought are are here are, are in the sweet 16. i'll go to marty M marty smith espn coach there's been so many unique aspects to this season for you guys there's the zion thing which is its own thing okay you've overcome injuries to several key players including him three one point wins in a month a lot going on how would you describe this journey to right yeah, now? Yeah, terrific. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm, I feel lucky to be on it with these kids because they, uh, they put you in a position to win. And look, you know, from the start to the end, we've kind of been the team. I'm not saying we're the best team, but we're the team that somebody has, a lot of people have said they, they need to beat us. That's a, uh, that's a good position, but it's, uh, there's a lot going on for that whoever that team is and these kids have handled it really well and uh, I do think we're fresher right now though that those uh, the ECC tournament getting Zion back really uh, was phenomenal but you play Syracuse Carolina and, and Florida State in three games it's a gauntlet and I, I didn't you know I didn't know I didn't think we were as good uh, in Columbia, and, and as fresh as, and, and obviously Central Florida was fantastic, but uh, we, we've been trying to, and since then, get fresher, and I think we are fresher. We're going to go to Zach, and then we're going to go over there, and then we're going to go into the middle. Zach Brazil, your post. Um, Coach, did, uh, there you are. <laughs> Do you You're with forever, right? <laughs> yeah. You, uh, yeah, I guess so. Did, uh, when, when you talk about being fresher and, you know, maybe rejuvenated, do you think coming having a game like that for your young players is a good thing because it, it shows how tenuous yeah. this can be? Uh, yeah, there's, look, there's pressure on us all the time. And, and if you are, like, pressure or just play, you know, just play. The fact that I thought our guys were very resilient in the last couple minutes of the game for young kids especially. Actually, Johnny and I talked about it after the game. Johnny Dawkins and I talked about it, and then I called him the next day just to check on him. We talked for a long time, and and uh, they they gave us a knockout blow 
with all those shots. And boom, 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 boom. And uh, for the most part, forget about X's and O's, calls or whatever. You, you, you're going to be knocked out. And our guys weren't. And that says a lot for, the, for these kids. And, and it says a lot for them. I, this has been a, a really good group. And uh, uh, winning, winning any game, but that game in the NCAA obviously is, is huge. Coach K, we're going to start right here in row two on the right-hand side, and then we're going to come over here. Jeff Zilge at USA Today. You all right? I'm, I'm good, Mike. Thank good, you. Good. I appreciate that. Uh, given the 24-7 news cycle, social media, the pressure of being a number one seed and, and the projected to be the number one pick eventually, what impresses you or what stands out most about what Zion, how Zion has handled all of that on and off the court? Yeah, no, it's it, everything. Everything. This kid is – He's just one of a kind. You know, he's certainly a special basketball player, but as a youngster, he, he, he has a maturity. You know, it, it's, it, it's uncommon. It really is uncommon, and how humble he is and uh, how fresh, exciting. You know, he's uh, uh, it's exquisite. You know, just uh, the, the best. And... Uh, it's been an honor for me uh, to be with him on this on this journey. Coach, we're gonna go over here, our left hand side. Steve Wiseman, Durham Herald Sun. Um, Cam's shooting percentage isn't as high as some other guys on the team, but yet he's made some big shots this year. Florida State, Louisville yeah. last Sunday. H how have you seen him handle the ups and downs of this season to be able to stay confident to take those big shots when he hasn't had a great year? Yeah, shooting? actually, you know, I think for anybody, it. it, it if you keep bringing cumulative with you into the moment, you're not very smart. You know, and so you have to, whatever, good or bad, you got to get rid of it. And so in the last few games, actually, Cam shot very well. And, uh, you know, he's, he stays confident because he is confident and we're confident in him. And, uh, uh, you know, we have confidence in him. And but you that's why, you know, I know you all get involved with so many stats and whatever, but y you have to be who you are in the moment you're in, not the moment you were in. And 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 uh, I, that's what we try to get across to, to our kids. Just play this moment and don't worry about what's happened. Hey, Coach Adam Zagoria, how you doing? Good. Um, I think there were 24 Canadians when the tournament started, including RJ and Nikhail here. Can you just say a little something about what you've seen over the years of development in Canadian basketball and how special uh, can RJ be in the kind of the history of that group? No, RJ can be as good as anybody coming from Canada. Uh, obviously, his dad now runs, uh, just took over. He Actually, Steve Nash said he was running it anyway. And so, uh, no, they, it's been like an invasion of talent. And not just of talent, but character. They're, you know, they're like this, RJ's, again, he should still be in high school. You know, he, he reclassified. And for him to have the maturity and talent to play at this level at what he's done, he scored about 800 points. And, he, and he's been with us the whole time. He's the one kid that hasn't been injured. And uh, no, fantastic, just just fantastic. And uh, uh, we're getting so many more and more players from Canada uh, in the NBA and in the NCAA. Uh, uh, yep, go ahead. Mike, Don Marcus from the Baltimore Sun. Do you get a sense that more basketball fans have embraced this team, this Duke team, because of Zion, or, or maybe the freshman, but specifically Zion, than any of the great teams you've had? You know, I, 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 I'll let someone. I, I don't really pay attention to fans embracing us, because uh, we have our fans, and we have people who don't want us to win. And for me to get caught up in what percentage or whatever. Uh, it, it doesn't. I'm just glad that people are attentive to what we do, and if we're they're attentive to what we do, it must be that 
we're pretty good at doing it. And uh, but this group is a group that can be liked by a lot. If you like basketball, you, you should like these kids. Whether you like me or not, that's another question. All right, we're gonna go right here. Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer. Coach, um, another question about Cam Reddish. Uh, yeah. What uh, what areas have you seen the most improvement in him uh, since the season began, and, and what attributes do you like about him? On no, no, he's just uh, going to be a constantly growing player. He's a young player. You know, he's got he's he's got talent. He's a great kid, coachable. You know, he's improved tremendously defensively, and in toughness. You know, just to be able to handle the rigors of of this level of schedule, and uh, you know, he's you know, he's going to keep getting better. He's not even Zion and RJ. These guys aren't as good as they're going to be. <laughs> they're they're in the process of becoming. You know, and that's when you have a young team. It's it's not who they are when they're 23 and you look back, boy, you had those guys. No, they're, we have them now, and they're becoming, and that's my job is to help them keep getting better and keep learning about the game, and Cam's been a great kid to coach. Maybe we have time for maybe one more. Uh, Mike, Pete Thamel from Yahoo. Uh, Two-part question. Uh, you've obviously had a long association with Nike throughout your career. Right. I'm curious if you have any reaction to Nike Grassroots and EYBL being involved in the latest None. set of federal. Okay. And None. there was an intimation by Michael Avenatti, the lawyer. None. I, I have, no, there's nothing there. Thank you. All right, Coach. You're all set. All right. Thank you. Got it.